Well, Jim Morrison died in 71 and they disbanded in 73, but the doors remain bigger than ever. Last year, the three surviving band members got back in the studio to put down some backing tracks for some of Jim's poetry recorded on his 27th birthday. It's become the album An American Prayer, which our next guest is here to promote. Please welcome the founder of The Doors and their keyboard, Arista, 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 Arista Mr. Ray Manzarak. <laughs> I got your name wrong. That's all right. Oh, you did I'm good. Sorry. You did good. Right, yeah. come on in. All right, guys. Roger, Chris. Hey, boss. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a fair slice of rock and roll history here right now. This is not bad. This no, is a, quite a lineup. Does this happen every day on the show? Yeah, we had the Beatles in last week. Were they? How were they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but John again, very reluctant, but there you go. <laughs> now, the, the 60s were, you know, peace, love, mung beans, all of that, but the doors went a, a much darker way. Was that a deliberate ploy to run against the pack? Um, none of it was a ploy. Yeah. The, uh, the whole 60s was about reality. That's, uh, it, it wasn't a joke, it wasn't a game. It was a serious uh, undertaking to actually change the course of uh, human history. And uh, perhaps we didn't do it, but uh, we certainly got high. Had a decent shot with Vietnam. <laughs> So, well, See, that wasn't our war. That's the whole point of it. What we were trying to do was to stop the war. The, yeah. uh, you know, there's a saying, uh, hippies have a saying, it's called make love, not war. We didn't want the war. We wanted to stop the war. Otherwise, we, uh, I mean, God knows, you know, a couple of guys like us, uh, young people. We didn't have the war, but we sure made a lot of love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got high, too. <laughs> oh, I love rock and roll talk. I love it. We ingested certain substances that are now uh, proscribed, now illegal, but yeah. uh, at the time, uh, 65, 67, LSD was not uh, an illegal drug. Really? And uh, you could open the doors of perception if you dared, if you had the courage, uh, if you had there the There we go, guts. the name. What was... If you had the guts, take me inside a trip, right? Uh, well, it's a, uh, it's, it's a classic spiritual um, merging with the universe in which you realize that you, Andrew, are actually at one with the entire universe. No, no, I won't. That's what not I the one I went on. You didn't have that one? No, well, no, it was, no, it's totally different. No, no Ray really? Got, Ray got the group, group therapy trip. Excuse me, Ray. We had the California one. Yes. Did, you have, did you have I the... the Shepherd's Bush one. Oh, it looks like the same. Was that the Gila monsters coming out of the eyes and the yeah. tongue on fire trip? That's right. One? Yeah, right. Well, now, that one exists too, but <laughs> that's the other side of the coin. So you're going to balance off heaven and hell and, uh, you know, Aldous Huxley's book, The Doors of Perception. If anyone reads anymore, I'd highly advise uh, looking into Aldous Huxley's book, The Doors of Perception, if you want to know what psychedelic is all about, that will explain it to you. Towards the late 60s, a lot of police were coming to your gigs and there was a lot of hostility. What was it like playing under those circumstances? That was insane. The cops were lining the stage between me and you guys. It's a row of cops. Now, I don't know whether they were to protect us from you or to protect you from us or how it worked, but uh, Morrison was actually busted. Uh, you know, Miami happened and... Did he it, actually expose himself? Because that was the charge. That was the charge. That was one of the charges. He was up on four charges. Uh, obscenity, drunkenness, uh, filth and... Singing uh, in a minor and, key and, in a public place, things like that. <laughs> something like that. An overlong member, I think. <laughs> so he did expose himself? Well, we're not sure. There was a stack of photos entered into evidence 200 photos and not one having photos of everything not one of the photos did the ivory shaft appear uh, but you were sitting there uh, from where you sat from where from where I sat I didn't see it he right. was holding his shirt in front of him and kind of moving it he taking his shirt off moving it back and forth saying I'm gonna show it to you I'm gonna show it to you watch this watch this hey did you see it hey there it was and look at there it is there it is and whether or not it was ever seen I'm not sure yeah. and I think had it been seen, well, there would have been women sighing and perhaps weeping and <laughs> screaming with joy. I, I'm not sure what. You know. Well, it uh, depends how big it actually was there, right? I mean, it was a big auditorium we're talking about. Well, it wasn't that big. The, oh, the auditorium. <laughs> yeah, okay. right. <laughs> now, what was it like uh, working with somebody who really took life well, to the edge and beyond it, in fact? Uh, maddening, insane, and uh, delightful and joyous and, uh, you know, rhythmic and intense and powerful and passionate. You've been practicing your adjectives and adverbs. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's very, very good. Does, I mean, did, did Jim Morrison influence you, Rog? No, I can stand their music. <laughs> <laughs> it's driving me nuts. 
come on. You wanted that no, youthful I, I, pout. No, I, I mean, they were, West, they were kind of West Coast America. We, we were London. Yeah. And uh, Didn't these guys, they I were like, before uh, us. I mean, we, uh, we, I don't think we influenced you guys. If anything, you guys uh, had a little influence on us. This man influenced Jim Morrison. I don't, I don't think it went the other way around. Jim Morrison I obviously influenced, influenced him at the you. Yellow White when he drank my bloody Southern Comfort. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. You I mean, got I, him drunk, I, man. You were plotting. I got you Jim Morrison drunk with you <laughs> He was a virtual virgin. I had a Not full over. bottle of Southern Comfort yeah. and I had one swig out of it and I said, want a drink, Jim? Exactly. Yeah. Well, see, that's... And he gave it back <laughs> empty. <laughs> <laughs> well, because Keith Mooney would have eaten the bottle, so you were lucky. <laughs> now, Chris, did either of these bands have an influence on you? You know, it's like, just listening to all this, it's like, you know, talking about taking trips and all that yeah. stuff. I mean, I, I never smoked marijuana or took a trip or anything and probably, I don't know if you get, do you get Dragnet over here with, you know, Joe Friday? Uh, we remember Dragnet, yeah. Did you ever see that? There's an episode on there where, like, the guys take LSD and then they all end up dead. <laughs> Stick with I, saw that. I, just saw, I just saw that, so you know, I just have back. Chris right is a off, surfer, you know. Yeah. You, uh, Chris is on a natural <laughs> high, man, obviously. You know, this man is straight arrow and a uh, good human being, you know. That's what it's about. It's about being a good human being on the planet. Oh, right, you you're have so lovely. The guts. This is like this is like we got good and evil here fighting it out. Exactly. We're gonna I, have saw, a I saw him before he was on TV today. I saw him this morning at breakfast. Yep. He's the same way. <laughs> Oh no! So he's, is he. he's a nice guy. He's the same way. He goes, "How you doing?" He gave me his number and stuff. I mean, he's he's cool. Well, actually, the, the album you, "Missing You Already," yeah. an American prayer. Um, what was it like going back in the studio recording uh, with a ghost? Because you had Jim's voice in your ears. He was in the earphones. John and Robbie and I are in the recording studios about four months, five months ago. We're playing our music. We're hearing Jim in the earphones. When you're in the studio. The singer is always in a, uh, in a soundproof booth. It's called a vocal room or whatever the hell it's called. And you're playing your music. You're with the other guys. And he's off there. You go back into the studio and all four of you are there to listen. And he wasn't there, man. It was, it was like a ghost. You're yeah, right. It was, uh, the spirit was there. The energy was there. But the physical presence wasn't there anymore. Was it uh, boogity boogity? No, 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 man. <laughs> no, it's not oogity boogity. <laughs> okay, just thought I'd ask. Okay, well, you did, and no, it wasn't like that. <laughs> oh, well, that's a bit disappointing. Uh, Ray, Roger, Chris, don't move from these seats right. because we've got something very special for you coming up in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Manzarek.